Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Um, I think it's um, hopefully, um, what's this? Welcome in address. Uh, my name remains Dikene Solubo Nolan Peku. Uh, we are welcoming each and every one of us to our Bible study today. And this topic we've been, you know, looking through it for the past few weeks. And this is the secret, secret of the supernatural elevation. I implore you, let us listen and jot down notes. You know, let's jot down notes and whatever the gray area that you don't understand, let's all, all discuss it together. In Bible study, this is where we dig deep to the word of God. There's no right or wrong. Everybody we are all, even our teacher is still learning. And we students we are still learning. So we are all equal before the Lord. So we should not be ashamed to have any question. So I welcome each and every one of you to our Bible class of today. I pray that the Lord Almighty will be with us all and we all enjoy yeah. this topic. We we mm -hmm. It will um, it will be benefit to our to our soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome, Amen. all welcome, uh, um, Amen. everyone. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for yet another day of your studies. We bless your name because you are God. Day in, day out, you prove yourself mighty. Thank you, Lord. Holy One of Israel, as we gather to study your word, Father, King of glory, speak. As we gather to hear your word, Amen. give us an open mind. Interpret your word to us Amen. and your own will. Father, Lord, King of Amen. glory, give us wisdom and understanding. Give us Amen. knowledge. Amen. Father, as we hear your word, most importantly, let us be doers of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The, great, the King of glory in Jesus' mighty Amen. name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, another day. <laughs> um, I'll be, we will be talking on, uh, within this period, we have been on supernatural uh, elevation. And by the special grace of God, I will be talking on the secrets to elevation. The secrets to supernatural elevation. So, um, I would want to say that elevation is the action or fact of raising or being raised to a higher or more important level, more important state, or even more important position. Hmm. Amidst these positions is the upward call and the downward craving. The call between two poles, that which is behind me, that which is behind you, and that which is before me, that which is before you. Pulling my soul apart. Pulling your soul apart. Now when we go into the Bible, when we read the Gospel of Mark, we are, we are obviously reading about uh, Jesus teaching men that are not yet matured, that are not fully matured in faith. 
they have not mastered their faith. You cannot uh, teach further than you have learned. That is the truth. You can only teach that which you know, which you have learned. So you cannot also get a master's degree in faith because faith is very deep and your relationship with God goes a long way to determine facts because you can never master faith as a matter of fact but you have to follow you have to follow on to know the word you have to grow progressively and this is the moment i call the moment of training so um in course of jesus teaching they were inquiring about the kingdom and jesus is saying to them that some of you will not taste death until you will have seen the kingdom come and go away some people have problems with scripture because they kind of said that all the apostles are dead but they did not uh, see the glory but if you ask me um i will say that they have not read the bible properly because some of the 12 apostles jesus set apart because some of the 12 apostles jesus set apart and led them upon the mountain to see the glory of the kingdom of god but the truth is that the glory of the kingdom of god for them comes in glimpses yes it comes in glimpses what do i mean by the glory of the kingdom of god coming in, in glimpses it comes momentarily it comes like partially it comes sometimes like a flash so the glory of god comes in glimpses and not detailed and jesus says some of you will not test that until you see the kingdom of god come with power then he pulled three out of twelve he pulled them apart therefore there are chances that from the moment you are chosen you are likely to be pulled apart yes from the moment you are chosen you are likely to be pulled apart so when god gives you glimpses he sets you apart not for the purpose of superiority no not for the purpose of arrogance no but for the uniqueness of your parts hallelujah you can never be um, in a situation like that you are likely not going to be in association with much people you'll be set apart therefore i must uh, remind you that the miracle of elevation the miracle of elevation like i said jesus took three people to the mountain and the rest remained the miracle of elevation did not start from the mountain hallelujah the miracle of elevation did not start from top of the mountain it started down in the valley when he called the three from the twelve and said 
leave the rest of them to operate on this level. So three people went up. The remaining uh, nine people remained on the level that they are in. Now, if I must uh, say this to you, you must understand that some people find it difficult to pass their tests or exams. They are not willing to leave their comfort zone. In other words, they prefer the areas that they are familiar than following that which is divine. If you are ever going to follow Jesus, he's going to call you apart by yourself. Everything in life that you go through, you go through on your own. So I want you to understand that faith is not proven in the mount, uh, on top of the mountain, but it is proven in the valley before you are chosen. So it is the valley that makes you eligible for the mountain. If you are not willing to leave the 12, then you cannot see the one. I think that a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times people uh, see things. People see things. They are not willing to look into what they have seen. And uh, realistic speaking, I consider it the struggle of being called up. It is the struggle of being called up. The struggle of being called up comes up when your situation is elevated above your mentality. So at every point in time, you must act according to the level of your calling. Now, I want you to imagine this scenario. Imagine that you are going up to the mountain 9,000 feet above the sea level. That means that because of the height of the mountain, you are likely going to go through different kind of weather before getting to the top of the mountain. What this implies is that the process of elevation does not come easily. You are bound to encounter difficulties before getting to the peak or the apex of the position the Lord wants you to be. Another fact on the process of elevation is that it comes step by step. Otherwise, one may get choked and become disenchanted. Therefore, it's imperative that we pray for the spirit of discernment, as this will enable us to know when we are ascending or descending. Hallelujah. Amen. So like I said, Jesus took three out of twelve disciples and took them to the mountain. There he revealed to them who he really is. There he revealed to them who he is. They, they, they lived with him. They walked with him. Stayed with him. Ate with him. And yet, they did not know who he really is. This is because who he, he really is it's revealed in the high places. So as they went up to the hill, he revealed his uh, different glory, his wondrous grace, his phenomenal essence, his divinity, which is in high places. My God is in the high places, though. He is 
in the struggle. He is in your storm. He is in the blowing of the wind. He is in with trials, with your trials. He is in the frailty of life. He is in the fickleness of the people and even in the brokenness of people. Hallelujah. He is even in circumstances. He is in the fragments of the heart. It is the stretch until we receive the wonders of his glory. The only begotten son of God. Therefore, I say to you this day that spiritual elevation is not meat and drink, but rather I consider it peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It is not our circumstances, but in our tenacity. Hallelujah. So talking about elevation, majority of us sees elevation as a physical upliftment financial upliftment, and so on and so forth. But as for me, I see divine elevation as that which comes down through humility and goes up through Christ-like exaltation. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to repeat that place again. Talking about elevation, majority of us, this elevation as a physical upliftment, financial upliftment, and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. But as for me, I see divine elevation as that which comes down through humility and goes up through Christ-like exaltation. What this means is that Jesus Christ humbled himself and was therefore exalted. In fact, Christ was an embodiment of humility. In fact, if you ask me further, I will give you the narratives of Christ in six words. Narrative of Christ in six words. Permit me to, to start by saying, the first is the birth of Christ. Second is the baptism of Christ. Third is the transfiguration of Christ. Fourth is the crucifixion of Christ. Fifth is the resurrection of Christ. And sixth is the ascension of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, talking about the birth of Christ, if we look at the book of Matthew, Matthew 1, 18 to 25, and Luke 2, verse 7, it said, and she brought forth and she brought forth her firstborn. Look to seven. And she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in a swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There was no room for them in the inn. That means that they could not afford hospital. They could not afford hotel. The only place they found was in the, uh, the place where they were animal, in the manger. That was the level of Christ when he was born. Christ in his infinite power. Let us look at his baptism. If we look at the baptism of Christ in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. With particular reference to verse 15, it says, And Jesus answered, answering, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for this, for thus it becometh us to fulfill the righteousness. Then he suffered him. Therefore Jesus humbled himself to be baptized by John the Baptist, who was his forerunner. Hallelujah. Jesus humbled himself. An act of humility is one of the secrets to elevation. Amen. Now, coming to the next one, which is the transfiguration. If we look at the book of Matthew, 
Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 to 8, with particular reference to verse 2, which says, I was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. His face did shine like as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Hallelujah. Jesus, with all his power, his divinity, is overwhelming and second to none. Yet he was he, he was humble. He ate with the disciples, even he washed their feet. Humility, secrets to elevation. The next is crucifixion, uh, crucifixion of Christ. Matthew twenty-seven, verse twenty-seven to fifty, with particular reference to verse thirty-five, which says, "And they crucified him, and parted and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled." which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. All this he knew, and yet he humbled himself. Before these things happened, he had knowledge, vivid knowledge of them. He anticipated them. He was calm, as humble as a lamb which he was. He humbled himself until he was crucified. Next is the resurrection of Christ. Luke 1, verse 1 to 9, with particular reference to 6 to 7, which says, He is not here, but in, uh, but is risen. Remember, how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the of the sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Resurrection, he has risen. Hallelujah. And the last six, the, the sixth one of it is the ascension of Christ. Luke 24, verse 51, says, Jesus led the 11 remaining disciples to Bethany, a village on the Mount of Olives, and instructs them to remain in Jerusalem until the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he parted from them, and he was carried up into heaven. Hallelujah. This is upliftment. He was taken away. He was carried into heaven. That is upliftment. Hallelujah. So humility is humility that brought that uh, brings about upliftment. Humility that brought about exaltation. Humility that brought about elevation. So, but for the sake of clarity, for the purpose of clarity, in case you do not understand my reason for going through, for going through this route, I want you to understand that Jesus Christ, who we are following, is an embodiment of humility. So in my conclusion, I want to bring it down further. I want us to look at the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Hallelujah. What's that? Psalm chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. He said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate 
day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruits in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah. That's verse 3, verse 4. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Amen. Now, looking at this uh, particular place that we just uh, read, my own analogy to this place is that we have to learn how to follow God by meditating on his word. This means spending time reading and thinking about what you have read. This means examining yourself as to be in perfect relationship with God. This means applying what you have read into your everyday life. Applying what you have read into your everyday life. If you want to follow God, you must follow what you must follow his word. You must follow his word or what he says. This law means all of the scriptures. The law we are talking about in that place is all of the scriptures. Reading the scripture, understand, uh, understanding the scripture, and applying the scripture into your life and humbling yourself, and then you will get supernatural elevation, even beyond your own imagination. The more you know about the word of God, the better your relationship is with God. In verse 3, the phrase says, prosper. The phrase, in verse 3, the phrase, they prosper in all they do. Does not mean immunity, does not mean immunity or uh, to immunity to failure. It does not mean immunity to difficulty. Nor does it guarantee health, wealth, happiness. What it means to me is that when we apply God's wisdom, the fruit, that is the result of the application of the wisdom of God, we bear, uh, we bear, uh, will, be, will be good and will uh, receive God's approval. It will be good, it will receive God's approval. Just as a tree, on the riverside, produces uh, luscious fruit, beautiful fruit, sweet fruit. We also are soaked in the word of God, producing plausible actions, productive actions, good attitude that honors God, that is in consonance with the word of God, that is, that gets God's approval. As a Christian, to achieve anything worthwhile, we must have God's uh, word in our hearts. Again, the book of James, James chapter 4, verse 10, it says, it says to us, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. So also does uh, Psalm 75 verse 7 says, but it is God who uh, executes judgment, putting down and lifting up another. Hallelujah. So in conclusion, for we to actually achieve anything that is supernatural, that is an elevation, we have to be in tune with God. We have to adhere to the word of God. We have to study the word of God. We have to humble ourselves in all our actions so that everything we do receives approval from God. 
and then we are uplifted. Praise the Lord. At this point, I hand over uh, to Minister uh, Biola. Well, thank you, Evangelist Dominic. Thank you, sir. Um, I think we have our coordinator tonight, Mr. Um, is that Mr. Bushi? Uh, hello, sir. Hello? Yes, I'm. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. I want to appreciate our teacher for that brilliant. Uh, teaching that's so powerful and uh we thank you sir uh thank you, sir. He, he, he was able to take us to the uh secret to supernatural elevation and he made use of uh some one two to four also dwell to 20 to 29 he also moved for that to make use of uh, matthew 27 35 luke 9 22 also luke 24 51 and also that he, he, he referred back to that same psalm again, 1 to 24. And he was able to tell us that faith is very important when we are talking about supernatural, a secret to supernatural elevation. We have to have salvation, we have to have faith, and also we have to meditate in the word of God. And we have to believe what uh, we want to do. And we have to, be, we have to know that uh before we can be elevated supernaturally we have to we have to be elevated spiritually these are uh uh uh, uh, uh basics that our teacher was able to to tell us nine the portraits is on that is talk about belief talk about faith talk about identity, and also talk about persistence endurance all these things are in that is that is that it was able to show talking about secret to supernatural elevation, secret to supernatural elevation. But our teacher has not asked us any question. Or if uh from, from me, I'll just draw it continuity half uh, is a very good topic and I want all of us to be good. We want to add we want to welcome contributions. Also if our teacher uh wants to ask us any any question. Also, ask us questions about about this this topic was very crucial. But so then, I want to welcome the contribution first. Questions: if you Have anything that bothers you from the beginning of this uh, of this point that like, talk about supernatural elevation? And all the topic apart from this one, I want us to raise to come to the platform, ask other people also. Contribute. We are talking about supernatural elevation from the beginning of this month, both both in the class, both in sun in the in the summer. We are talking about supernatural elevation. I believe if this topic has touched you, I believe all of us to have something to ask or to contribute because by next month we are going to another topic entirely. So let's make it interactive this night. Thank you. You welcome. Contributions and questions so far. So far. Thank you. Question, contributions. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you for this topic. Supernatural elevation. 
think I want to, the question I want to ask that um, someone asked me. He said, um, Jesus said, he said, the violent take it by force. And the person said, now, when we talk about supernatural elevation, is violent really necessary? Or we should not take it by force, or we should just pray over it and say, God, we elevate us, then we sit down and we sleep. Mm -hmm. So that's my question. Did you get the question? I got the question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, mommy. God bless you, man. Anybody, please, can I help us? Anybody, can I help uh, uh, can I Can I contribute, please? Yes, yeah. mom. Yes, they say mom. from the days of the John the Baptist, the violent take it by force. What is the reason of the violent take by force? You remember the Lucifer when he was in heaven. It was not Satan, it was Lucifer. It was the archangel and an instrumental worship of to God. But when a pride came, he lifted up the pride overtake him. He do conspiracy in order to overthrow God. That is where the scripture let us to know when something is not right, we can't stand and just look. We cannot be quiet and say. That is why the angel Michael have to go to challenge him. We need to challenge that is their violence. It's not a violence of applying with knife or um, bitter, bitter one, but it's to be firm in your spirit. It's to be firm in your prayer. It's to be firm to stand for the right to the truth. That is our violence because we have the sword. The sword is in our hand, it's in our mouth. That sword, we have to be firm with it. That is our way we exercise because it's our bullet. It's our weapon. So that is why we exercise that, you know, the same thing. When Moses died, they said, I want to go and collect this. He said, the Lord rebook you. He didn't say, I rebook you. He used the name of the Lord. He said, the Lord rebook you. So we need to stand against wrong. We need to be firm in what we are doing. And we, and we have to be violent in the spirit. You will know when your spirit is violent. You will know when your spirit is angry. You, you, you don't plan it. You just see, you just move, reacted. You get irritated to things happen. I tell you something, Pastor. I was about to say something in line with how I wanted to talk. Pastor, Apostle, raise up and say what exactly in my mind. That was last Sunday. Correcting every one of us. The way we look at the scripture, the way we apply scripture, that we should self study ourselves, approve of the word of God. We study to know it, to understand it. So when anything that challenges us, our faith, we will know how to be violent with it in our spirit. That is my contribution. God bless you. Amen. Thank Amen. you, mommy. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um. Hallelujah. Um, praise, the, praise the Lord. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Yes, the violence has to take it by force in the uh, in the area of uh, area we are at now, especially in this uh, domain. The domain we have to take it by force because the enemy is not happy. For the Christians, so we have to take take it by force. The enemy is at a lot in order to take us out of the way in all times, in every way, and whatever we lay our hand upon, and the faith is attacking the Christian. The enemy is attacking the Christian. Only the Christian. He don't want anybody to 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 enjoy that great uh, that, that great palace that he has lost. He has lost it and he has lost it. So for us now to obtain the kingdom, for us now 
to go up there and see our Lord Jesus Christ face to face, not to take it by force. The Lord will see us too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I, please, if you don't mind, I would like to quickly make a contribution along the line of Mommy Elizabeth Oyedeji. Oh, Mommy said some things that are very um, crucial, especially in this end time. And I just want to lay a bit of emphasis in that direction. Of course, we know that the focus for this month, specifically, right from when we started Supernatural, dissecting Supernatural Elevation, is not to see Supernatural Elevation only from the physical angle, because we said Supernatural means that something that is beyond the natural. And we, we one of the scriptures we quoted initially was um, from Matthew 6.33, that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God, we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto us. So for supernatural elevation that we are looking for, talks about fulfilling purpose, talks about entering into that next dimension, which is imaging Christ, being Christ-like in all totality, being Christ-like in our thinking being transformed, like Romans 12, 2 said, that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind, cutting away from the things that are worldly, moving to that level where we can say that even if rapture happens today, I can, I can do a self-assessment of myself and begin to grow, begin to move towards that holiness, that righteousness, that level of consecration. And if I want to take something from uh, what uh, evangelist taught tonight, getting to that level of not, 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 deceiving myself that you know that kind of humility that is hypocritical i just carry myself as if i'm very humble but deep within me i'm something else but getting to that level of humility where we can assess we can really be like jesus we can really attain to that level of spiritual elevation so going back to uh, the question that our doctor asked on behalf of uh, the person with that and we take it by force. I said I would go in line of Mommy Oedeji. We know very well that in this world that we are, there is, I think, I think the simplest way to explain this is the battle is just between two kingdoms. Either we, from, if we go from Genesis to Revelation, if we start from the past to the present to the future, right from Genesis, when, right from chaos, Right from even even in conflict resolution in conflictology in theology, we realize that the battle is between two kingdoms: the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. The kingdom of darkness will mitigate, will stand against everything for man not to attain unto that spiritual elevation, and man must do everything humanly possible and. Oh, and that, oh, let, let, let me quickly quote a scripture. Let me quickly quote a scripture to back this from, from the word of God. If we look at Nehemiah 4, or if look, even if we look at Psalm 144, verse 1, it says, Blessed be the Lord. Psalm 144, verse 1. It says, Amen. It says, Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. There is something we say in Yoruba, Ologuni Oluwa. I don't, the, the violence we are talking about, what, what's important, when we use the word violence, we can take it, am I, do I need to fight? I only find my most open, hold your peace, I will fight for you. Because of the intent of our hearts, but the violence we are talking about here is, is guiding everything. Scripture says, Guard your heart. We are guiding what is ours. We are, I'm guiding my future. 
The devil will offer me different things. The, the devil will offer me everything to take me. The devil will bring mammon. The devil will bring oh, oh, Delilah. The devil will bring everything. But we must guide it violently. The devil does not play. I would, I, 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 there's something I was aware of. When it comes to strategic planning, the devil, in fact, there was a word usually say, but we know better now that no, the kingdom of God is not, is, is, is everywhere in the presence, but it's everywhere, it's in the news, it's in the social media, it's social media, it's everywhere, it's in, it's, it's in every nook and cranny. It will do everything to bring it. That's why scripture says in oh, Second Corinthians, I think 221 or there, but it says, let stand, take Recording in It's not a joke. We must take it by force. That height that we want to get to, that's a rapturable spirit, that rapturable soul that we want to achieve in the realm of the spirit. We must guide it. So every other thing he says, the blessing will come, the supernatural individual, which we must guide diligently, which we must guide with everything that we have. So taking it by forces, the intent of our hearts is using everything to resist. It says, scripture says, I think James, it says, resist the devil. And it will, it will flee from you. So we will resist it. We will fight it anything we can fight. Because this is about our destiny. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Amen. That's a very Thank brilliant you, contribution. Sir. Thank you. That's a very brilliant contribution. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you, sir. If you ask another question you want, you want us um, to, to talk um, about, or you have um, But the question I want to ask this night is what do we understand in the secret to supernatural elevation what do we understand because of um versus dominic spent 30 minutes you know teaching this night so what do we understand in the secret to supernatural elevation so we need to talk about that what do we understand i, I understand um one thing that he mentioned this night and then um, I want to read it in the Bible. Um, one of the secrets is um, we need to desire first. So uh, we need to desire. If you look in the, um, 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 the Bible, um, Psalms, I think it's Psalms. Um, um, no, I'm um, sorry. John chapter five, I think I think it's from verse one to nine about um, Jabez. He prayed out of pain because of um, he 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 was he had a desire for in his heart for his uh, I think it's for his name to be changed. I think I did, is it in, um, am I right? John is about the pool. John five. Can you put John five there? John 5, 1 to 9. Sorry, John 5, 1 to 9. Uh, to, uh, that's healing, yeah. Yeah, that was about the pool of um, the layman. Yeah? Yeah, the, that's it, the layman. So, um, he 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 decided, you know, to get to put to be healed. So the question is not is like, what do you understand in the, um, the secrets to um, supernatural elevation? And also, if you look into the um, Bible in First Chronicles chapter four about Jabez as well. So we need to talk about this. What do you understand? So I understand the first thing I understand is desire. I don't know about anyone else. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 
Yeah, so what, what do we really understand about the secret to supernatural elevation? I, I understand number one word, desire. So uh, when Islam, you can think Chris? he spent 30 minutes talking sure. about this. I mean, he mentioned a lot of things. And he mentioned also... Uh, uh, if you don't mind me saying this, there are several hands that I consider are up, including mine. Um, so I'd like our moderator to 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 moderate, if you don't mind. So there are, there are, there are five hands up. I don't know who was first. Um... Well, the Edward sound is up. Yeah, Minister Edward and Lenovo. The minister. And then minister, I think Minister Joseph's hand is up as well. Okay. Yeah, I think Lenovo is mommy. I think Lenovo is mommy Lambo. No, no, my hand is not up. Oh, okay, sorry, mom. Okay. No, okay. I think uh, Mr. Joseph can go ahead, and then uh, Mr. Viola, because I, I know I noticed the hands who was, was raised first. So let's just go that that way. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry, um, temporarily my background is noisy, but the train is driving up now. Hopefully, uh, before the next train comes, I will finish my response. Thank you, everyone that has contributed. Thank you, the teacher tonight. Thank you, everyone, moms and dads, and brothers and sisters. Reverend Sam, you did mention that desire, that is the one, number one. We have to desire it. And we, the story of um, Elisha, following Eli, I mean, Elijah, is typifies what desire does. Mm. And that desire has to be missed with humility. Because in the journey, while Elisha was following Elijah, there were ridicules. The children, the prophet, even sons of the prophet were asking him, we heard that your master is going to be taken away from you. We had they were mocking him on with that question, but he stayed steadfast, just like Reverend Sam said, desire. He desire to get that double portion anointing. Hmm. He followed Elijah, Elijah all through. And also, apart from desire and the and the able ability to stand to stay humble, one has to have a purpose. What purpose? What do you want God to do? What how how do you want God to elevate you? In what in what in what in what in what area? What are you doing that you want that elevation for? Mm. So the one has to determine his purpose and then stay focused and then humility and of course prayerfully. I think that's my submission. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you, sir. At least next person. Oh, okay. Thank you for me. that contribution, sir. That's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, for the the question. Um, and I, I'll just. I, I think that uh, everything that has been said, or even the question that was asked first, all relates together. You know, because there are deep secrets that God is revealing to us. And um, I thank um, uh, Evangelist for the topic and angle he's coming from, because the um, the actual scripture that we are looking at for our theme is uh, 1 Samuel 2 verse 8, which says, He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted them up, up the beggar from the dunghill. So we are, we are talking about people uh, or, or when we find ourselves in a, in a very low position and we are actually looking for a supernatural elevation. But we cannot actually be elevated if we do not humble ourselves. That I, I get I get that angle and how we are going about it. But if we look at it on the grand scheme of things, the, the idea of being humble, the idea of submitting yourself to God, all goes with the fact that you cannot actually be elevated if you still harbor some form of sin, some form of uh, discontentment to God, some form of not being um, committed to the things of God. All those things come and and would not allow you to be elevated so i'll just want to try and go um with the angle at which that question came about like um uh what was the question the question was that uh can we uh be supernatural hold on let me just grab that question um yeah yeah the question was that 
do we do we have to take supernatural elevation by violence uh by violence according to matthew and, and the truth of the matter is yes we have to we have to take it by violence because and and the um, minister Coyote actually did hit on on the head very much because a, a lot of us want to be elevated we want to be taken we we are all cramming for this supernatural elevation and we we really hope that we, our lives will be elevated but the truth of the matter is that if you have an element that which the devil can actually hold on to please forget about supernatural elevation <laughs> Forget about supernatural elevation. If your life is not aligned with the things of God, mm. if you are not humble, if you are not, I mean, and there are many things outside of humility that we can talk about, you know, but if your life is not aligned, if the devil has an element or that he can hang on, you there's no way by which he can, you can go before God and say, God, I want to be supernaturally, supernaturally elevated. And this is why we are saying that these things, you have to take it serious. The devil is not joking around. He's not joking around at, at all. He's not joking around. He's going to make sure that you are not going to actually achieve that. And whatever he has to do in order to make sure that like you have this element of your life. We're talking, we've, even this month, we've talked about compromise. We've talked about um, sins in our lives. We've talked about so many things that God has spoken to us in this month. Please just take a look at all these things and ask yourself, are you really ready to be elevated? Are you really ready to be elevated? What does the enemy, can the enemy look at in your life and go before God and accuse you before God? What can the devil go before God and say, look, but look at him. He says that he wants to be supernaturally elevated, but this is what he does. He has that strife. He has that unforgiveness in his life. <laughs> you know, that thing, so long as the devil can point on that, you are not going to be supernaturally elevated. Forget about that. But again, we are always asking for the grace of God to help us. So I'm just saying that like we, we need to really be serious about these things that God is revealing to us. And that's why we have to say that we have to take it by valor. We really have to push to the point where we actually want to submit ourselves to God. This is no, this is no joke we are talking about. I could have read another scripture and, and, and to let you know how the devil is really, really angry to make sure that we don't really make this. So let us not take this jo jokingly, but I thank God for the way um, Evangelist has gone about this. And I think that um, uh, humility is one aspect of it, but I think that there is more to it in terms of analyzing our lives and how God can actually elevate us um, for it. So that's where I want, I want to actually contribute. Thank you, sir. Please, uh, I just want to, uh, before I call Mommy Sarah, because I think uh, Mr. Joseph has already spoken. Mommy Sarah's hand is up. And uh, this is the last uh, opportunity to talk about supernatural elevation. And this is Bible study. Yes. And when we are talking about Bible study, the first question the person asks, he asks it from the Bible. So anywhere you are, when you have audience in your mind, please feel free to come to Bible study and ask. You cannot narrow everything to that topic only if you have something that's bothering your mind and is bible the first question came from bible so we need to align everything with bible thank you that's why i said any contributions any question because this is the last to be and today is the last day we are going to talk about supernatural elevation so mommy sir please Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone that has contributed. And I want to say thank you to our teacher, Minister Dominic, and to Dr. Amen. You know, as our coordinator has said, it's a Bible study. And we always said on Sunday that people should join in on Wednesday to come and dig deep. So if people have questions genuinely, that they're not clear about, let's give them the opportunity to ask. Otherwise, there won't be any reason for having a Bible study. I want us to, in line with the topic and also in line with the country, what Dr. Amos asked, I want us to go to Ephesians 6. It's a very popular verse, but I just want us to dissect it. It says from 6, it says, Ephesians 6 from 12, 
It says from 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devils. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the ruler of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Say, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, therefore stand, having your loins gathered about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> See, the truth and that righteousness are the secret of divine elevation the, with the truth and having the breastplate of righteousness and your feet should with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith where we ye shall be able to quench all the very that of the wicked and taking the element of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, yeah. praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. You see, perseverance and supplication for all saints. You know, this topic is, is a very, very powerful topic. It's a topic that defined. It's a topic with a de defined message for every one of us. And we've, we've, been treating, we've been treating it from the beginning of the month. It's a topic with a defined message for every one of us. You know, elevation is a seeking for the kingdom of God. Seek it first, the, the kingdom. And how do we see the kingdom of God? The way we can seek the kingdom of God is by we living a, a, a holy life. Because if we say we are saved, genuine salvation, if we say we are saved, genuine salvation, salvation is living a new life. We will not have us sin in our life. Let us go back to basics. It's because we lack basics. We, we lack the fundamental truth of the word of God. We lack it. We lack the basic fundamental. If we are saved genuinely, we, 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 if we are saved, if our heart is regenerated, we will not live in sin, we will not lie. We will not have we will be humble at heart in everything we, we do. We'll be submissive. It is when we don't have that salvation, when we try to hide from the truth, when we try to hide away from the truth, because the, the basic fundamental of any believer is, is salvation. The new repentance, the way I live before, I don't want to live it anymore. The things I do before, I don't want to live it anymore. I want to live Christ-like. That's not how anybody will say they're living Christ-like. You're still harboring sin. You're harboring unforgiveness. You're harboring pride. It's not possible. That's why this says, I'm taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I'm praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. In the spirit, supplication, releasing ourselves, everything to the Holy Spirit to take over. You know, it's, this is, and, uh, and unless we get to that point, elevation will just be a word of elevation. That will be nothing that will be supernatural in it. So I just want to, everybody have said a lot, a lot has been said. And it will be really, really unfair for this topic to go and our life still remain the same thing. I think we should all look inwardly. And as the teacher have said, the secret, the secret of divine elevation, faith, ha having the desire of God. And our teacher mentioned about six, the birth of Christ. He mentioned the birth of Christ because Christ is our Messiah. He died for us. 
it mentioned the birth of Christ. It mentioned the 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 crucifixion of Christ and the ascension of Christ. You know, there are six that our teacher mentioned, and I think we all we all need to go back to basic. We all need to go back to base genuine salvation. If anybody is still struggling with unforgiveness, they should go and ask God to save them. That's the basic foundation of a of the life of a believer. Until we get to that point, until we get to that point of genuine repentance in our hearts, repentance in our heart, we repent with the words of our mouth uh, about our attitude, about everything in us. Maybe God is calling all of us into repentance. So may God give us the grace. So I would like to hand over the please. Thank you, mommy, for that brilliant uh, uh, contribution, ma. More grace, ma. Then we go back to Atisha. If we have a final note, then you can give us that. Then from there, we move to our announcement. So, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will have a short uh, testimony concerning my life. Amen. Um, praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time I came to London. For me, going back to Nigeria, I went to church. It was during the period of uh, December. We used to have a uh, night VG and uh, fasting for about either 40 days or something. So I joined them in the church. So the first day, you know, I slept, I do because the heat is too much in the house. So I don't take any cloth to cover myself because I don't like heat. So one of my friends just take this, uh, uh, um, Iborun, we call it Iborun, a short, uh, cloth to cover your leg. Then I took it. I, I used it to cover my leg. I just see snakes. They were rejoicing. Eh? Rejoicing. Eh? I took the scarf. I put it aside. So, and the, we invited somebody for that uh, occasion that we are having, like VG, to come and lead us in revival. Then when the man finished, I said, this is what I see. He says, they are inviting me to their group. Eh? So, sister, Lo sister, so, 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 so. I was very, I was very bad. I feel bad. A wife of a pastor. Wish. Ah. I was not sleeping in the children's uh, children's department. I sleep in the church. You know, as I was sleeping, another woman sleep with me on my mat. Then I saw every, I, what I see. I do I all everything. I, what I what is this? What is happening? I didn't know that. The re regime I have, many people are done to be a witch. So then I report again. This is what I see. You see, it's the same thing. See, oh. So now the lady, the first lady that uh, I I re I removed the cloth on Sunday that uh, she is going to the to give her whether to sing or to something. Then he was saying, uh, you are reporting me. Somebody is reporting me to another person that I'm this and this. You don't know whether I've, uh, in the zone, 
that I'm representing them in the district. When they 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 they, they fight me, all of them they join their hand together to fight me. I that I used to go the the, the, the churches under us to go and preach to God. I couldn't preach again. When I reach the altar, I will prepare everything now, which I've been doing for over 10 years. I don't even know what to say again. That is why we have to take it by force. We have to take it by force. Before we can, we, before we can see daddy, before we can see our home, we have to take it by force. It's a long story. I don't want to keep you. I, I went to the mountain. I will be crying. I will be crying. I will be praying. I will be praying because all my life I used to go to the mountain. Ah, what has happened to me? I see that I'm dead already. When I reach the altar, I will not be able to pray. I will not be able to do. But what, when I reach my home, I will, I will do everything perfectly. They, they fight me to the extent that, ah, people are asking me that. Why, why can't you leave the church and go to another? Since the, your churches are many, it reaches that. So my dear brother, my dear pastors, my dear friends, please, we have to take it by force, violence, real violence. If they can even, if the devil can even go to Jesus and be tempting him, who are we that we will not be tempted? Thank you, sir. God bless you with the little word I've said. God bless Thank you. Thank you, mommy. That's a very great contribution, man. Very great contribution. You see, even the Bible also confirmed me. It said, there are many false prophets will rise up and ah. deceive many. So many of them are there. The book of, that is book of Matthew uh, 24, 11. Many. So it happens around, but may God continue to help us out. So final note from our teacher. Thank you, Mom. Final note from our teacher, if you have anything to contribute, sir. Final note. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, I think that's all for me tonight. Have, uh, that's it. Mommy, right, Sarah. Uh, Mommy. Hello, sir. Anything to contribute, ma'am? Well, I think a lot has been said, and today is the last uh, Bible study on this topic. And I would just want to administer every one of us to look inward inwardly and let us release ourselves to Christ. Mm -hmm. And as a believer, the, word, the Bible says we are in the world, we are not of the world. And there's always that contention. The, the physical and the supernatural. So we we have to earnestly with every strength and breath in us to live a holy and a righteous life and to be on the Lord's side. And to be on the Lord's side is a constant battle with the world. So we may God give us the grace to be on the Lord's side. And I just want to encourage every one of us that it's a month of an elevation, even, mm -hmm. even tonight and tomorrow, we should still have that high expectation mm -hmm. in our spirit, the desire, the desire to seek the kingdom of God and the desire to desire God. And as we do, God will surely enable um, us and elevate us, both supernaturally and physically. We shall never remain the same. Amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you, sir. Amen. 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 Uh, good evening, everyone, again. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to join us in our Bible study uh, tonight. Um, I want to thank our teacher, Evangelist Dominic um, Ezesinachi, for teaching us the secret to supernatural elevation. Turns out to be the uh, final of our uh, sermons or Bible study 
in our month of supernatural elevation. But I pray that supernatural elevation will not end in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to listen to the rest of our announcements. Um, so by the grace of God, we will be meeting online again on Friday. And Friday would be uh, the thirty the thirty first. Okay, so we still uh, still we're still in our month of supernatural um, elevation. We're meeting online from eight pm to nine pm for our online prayers. Uh, we encourage everyone. I uh, thank you very much for the for the turnout. I think our turnout in our Bible studies is growing by time. And uh, we pray that our online prayers will also continue in the same vein. Um, and then on the same Friday, the choir of the church will have the rehearsals at the church premises from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So all choristers should note that. On Sunday, which will be the first Sunday of the month, by God's grace, we'll be meeting at our church premises we meet, the service will start at 9.30 with our minister's prayer and follow, we'll follow it up from 10 a.m. with our Sunday school. Um, the Sunday school we did last week, I think uh, our minister Viola and uh, our Bible study teachers, I think there was a request for us to continue it in our Bible study at some point. The the topic was uh, the the name of Jesus. So maybe we can find some time to do it. It was very interesting. Um, and then who after Sunday school will continue with our family worship from 10:25 on onwards. The theme for the month of June, our senior pastor has just sent it, and our flyer is being prepared. The theme for next month of June, by the grace of God, is our month of unlimited breakthroughs. Um, of unlimited breakthroughs and Amen. the God's, God's scripture is Genesis 13 verse 17 it says arise walk through the land in in the length of it and in the breadth of it for I will give it unto thee believe Amen. it was God's promise to Abraham by then and that shall be your portion to be a month of unlimited breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus Amen, Amen. On Saturday, by God's grace, we'll be having evangelism, um, which would be, we'll be meeting at the church pre uh, church premises. It will start at 12 p.m. So please, let's all um, do our best to join the evangelism session. Uh, we'll converge in front of the church building around the pound land. And the Lord will bless you even as you do that. In the evening at 8 p.m., there will be Sunday school review. Uh, so all Sunday school teachers, please uh, make it a point to meet um, at 8 p.m. for your review. I don't think um, there is any further announcement um, unless Pastor Sarah or Reverend Sam. Is there any other further announcement? Oh, no, nothing on my side. Yeah. Nothing. God bless you. All right. Okay. Then we'll proceed forward with our closing prayer from Dr. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God praise for this um, topic, the secret of supernatural elevation. Say it exposes you to spiritual activities beyond human capacity naturally. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor, Lord Jehovah Nisi. You are our God. Indeed, you prove yourself every time on this study, O Lord. Father, Lord, you renew us. You teach us your way, O Lord. We say thank you. Father, Lord, for the month so far, O Lord, you took us through January, February, March, April, and May. Father, Lord, may your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for elevating us, O Lord, spiritually, for changing our situations, O Lord, for breakthroughs, O Lord, we say thank you. We thank, thank you for the teacher of today, O Lord. We thank you for everyone that tuned in, O Lord. We say, thank Lord you. Jehovah, and see this supernatural spiritual elevation, O Lord Jehovah, and see will not stop. 
today in the name of Jesus. In our life. But you continue to teach us your way, O oh Lord, to a higher realm in the name of Jesus. Until mm. we meet you face to face, O oh Lord, the strength, the humbleness, the obedience, O oh Lord, to carry on, O oh Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord, as we close today, O oh Lord, you want to say, this month, O oh Lord, has been a joyful month to us, O oh Lord. The next month we step into it, O oh Lord, you over and for open doors, for breakthroughs, O oh Lord, for everything that we desire in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. of Nazareth. Father, Lord, on Friday we'll come back again, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the testimony between now and Friday. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We share the grace, please, fellowship. May the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Lord and the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Holy Spirit. The Lord to be blessed upon us all the days of our lives. Thank you. God bless you, Ma. Good night,